Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's been officially two years since I purchased my uh, 2020 LT Trail Boss, and over the course of that time, I've made a lot of videos and uh, put a lot of parts on the truck and thought uh, now that this anniversary would be a great time to just kind of go through the list of everything that's on my truck and uh, talk about what I like about them, what I change and everything. Uh, like I said, it's, it's been a really awesome journey over this time. I've actually just reached over 10,000 subscribers, so thank you to all of those who have subscribed and uh, to anybody else who will uh, hit that subscribe button today. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do uh, at 10,000 subscribers is uh, start selling merchandise, t-shirts and stuff, and as you've probably guessed, uh, this is one of my uh, new designs. Uh, if you're interested in a shirt like that, I've got a couple. I'll kind of switch around during the, the making of this video here. Uh, but, you know, uh, there will be a uh, kind of a description at the bottom, uh, kind of like a little banner ad kind of thing that'll have all the merch and stuff. You can check it out. So uh, if you're interested in something like that, I'd really appreciate it. But let's get into it. This is Truck Ownership 101. I'm Spencer Elbebach. Class is now in session. All right, before we get started here, you know, as the thumbnail probably suggested, uh, there is quite a bit of accessories on my truck. I think I went through the list of uh, itemized parts and it was about 24 and you know, over $13,000 worth of stuff. And uh, that is a lot. And uh, like I said, with this channel over the course of a couple years and uh, really great sponsors has, has made all this possible. I really don't want this video to come off as, as a brag of stuff. You know, like that's not what I'm trying to do here at all. Um, you know, I know these are all like really nice parts. They're the premium versions of a lot of things. And, you know, the idea is, you know, I'm really fortunate enough to be able to get my hands on this stuff and use it. And I'm hoping with these videos, um, whether it's this one, kind of doing my long-term review of some of them that I've been on there for almost two years. Some have only been on for a couple weeks, but you know, it was two year anniversary, thought we'd go through it all. Um, you know, hopefully between this video and, and again, you can check my channel. Uh, if you just kind of click on my, uh, the icon, my picture for the channel, you can go back and view all my videos. There you can actually see the installs of the process of this stuff to see if it's a, a DIY that you want to take on yourself. So. You know, like I said, obviously, um, if it was me on my own, this is absolutely not a reasonable uh, build in two years. I would not put that much money uh, into my own truck. But uh, maybe there's a, a certain few couple, maybe just one thing that you had your eye on uh, that you really wanted. And hopefully this video is uh, beneficial to you. So um, without further ado, let's get into this thing. So um, the first few that I wanted to look at, some of my older ones that have been on there for a couple years, uh, are actually my, my wheel setup. Um, now in 2020, you could not get a 20 inch wheel that was all black like this from the factory. I know this looks like the Trail Boss factory rim, uh, but this is a 20 inch variant. So this is actually a replica. Uh, it was made by Vox, like V-O-X-X, I believe. Like I actually sold my takeoffs, uh, my 18 inch Trail Boss takeoffs. I didn't have the 20. I wasn't a fan of the factory 20 inch with kind of that brushed metal and black kind of thing. I like the all black of the 18s, but I wish they were bigger. So um, I was really happy with these. I think, again, this was two years ago, but it was around 18 or $1,900 for the wheels and the, the tires, uh, balancing, install, all of that. And I think my takeoffs were worth like 1600 bucks. So this was, I know I'm going from GM parts to non-GM parts, so the value is lessened, but I have a 20 inch wheel that I think really looks great on a full size truck. That's kind of the sweet spot with enough meat left on the tire. It's not like a rubber band, but um, anyway, uh, the second part. So yeah, really happy with these. They hold their air incredibly well. I did get uh, official you know, GM tire pressure monitors, so all that stuff works. Uh, this is a GM cap that fits right in it. So um, I've, I love the look. I know they make 20 inch GM ones now, but they actually look a little different now. The 20 inchers kind of almost have kind of like a Pentagon kind of shape there, but really happy with these. I would recommend them if they're still available. Um, second thing were these uh, caliper covers. Now I know caliper covers kind of get a bad rap because they're fake or whatever, but um, what I was looking for was maximum 
uh, like color. I wanted to see, a, I wanted a really decent pop of color there and I wanted it removable. I wanted to, if I, you know, sold the vehicle or um, something like that, I want to be able to get them off. Or maybe if I trade it up to a new version, which I actually did. These came off my 19 RST and then went to my 20. Um, with the 20 inch wheel, they fit very well. They might be a little snug on an 18. So I would kind of caution you on that. And last thing kind of in this realm would be the, uh, the Weston HDX uh, wheel to wheel drop steps. Um, and I have really loved these. I thought they give a great look to the truck. Kind of there's a lot of sharp kind of pointy edges to this thing. Uh, not a lot of, you know, gradual curves. It's a kind of a sharp look with this truck. And I think those angles of those drop steps are great. Um, you know, super solid, wide footsteps. There's no wiggle or flex to these. It's the truck suspension that moves. I also did the wheel to wheel variant, which gets you the third step. And that has been really great. You know, especially with the Trail Boss, these things are so tall. They've both brought the sides up so much higher on these to give you more cargo bed storage that getting in and out of these, I mean, I'm 6'2", and I've got long arms, and that's still a chore. So being able to climb up here and reach and grab and tie stuff down and everything has been phenomenal. As far as the two-year review, uh, you can see I'm getting some kind of cosmetic exterior rust damage on these steps. I do live in Minnesota, so they do definitely take a pound. This is the driver's side that gets the most use, of course. But um, I actually called uh, Weston and I was like, yeah, I better get some replacement steps. And they just screw on, so that should be easy enough, right? And I called them and like, well, this is under warranty. We're gonna send you some for free. So that was great. <laughs> I have no idea how long that warranty was, but I've got them, they're here. I just have them stored. I figured winter, winter's coming and uh, I'll run them another season and then replace everything in the spring again. So um, been very happy with that, but yeah, like maybe 900-ish price range for those, definitely a, a premium. They're the best drop step, most sturdy, ever, like just they're built. That was a heavy box that came in. So um, I would great, greatly easily recommend those again to anybody. So, all right, let's move on to some kind of cosmetic stuff in the front and back. Now, I know we love our trucks, but you know, every once in a while, especially after some of these mods and some performance enhancements, you just, you're just gonna have to send it, right? So let's take a look at a few more. Uh, let's see, there we go. Um, one of the things I would highly recommend is uh, upgrading your, some of your light bulbs uh, from the factory. You'll have incandescent bulb turn signals. Um, you should really upgrade those. Um, yeah, as you can see in some B-roll footage here, uh, that intense uh, on, intense off, it just looks much more fitting with the rest of the LEDs. Um, my brand that I would recommend is uh, LazFit. You know, I've, I've had these for a couple years. I did try my shot at um, some non, uh, some cheap knockoff ones at uh, Amazon and stuff. And um, they're hit or miss. You know, there's an issue called hyper flashing where uh, it'll just blink really quickly because there's not like some resistance built in going from incandescent to LED. Um, I've tried, you know, Sylvania is a really well-known brand for light bulbs and they had some for a while and then got out of it at the time. I'm not sure if they're back into it or, but just from my reviews on Facebook groups, I've seen what has lasted from start to end is LazFit. Everybody seems happy with them. Um, they're great. And I do actually have a kind of a partnership with them. They sponsored a video and they gave me a discount code. So if you use TO101, Truck Ownership 101, go to their website, I'll link it, and uh, you can get 10% off uh, your purchase. So they have bundles too. If you have a custom truck, so you have the regular incandescent headlights or halogens, um, you can actually upgrade that to LED as well. So um, yeah, I would say, you know, your turn signals, obviously, if you have a custom, they do headlights. And then in the back here, uh, tail lights or reverse lights, excuse me. Uh, those can be upgraded to LED and that's huge too. Uh, these looked kind of yellowy, which looked really weird with all the LED. Uh, same thing for your license plate lights. So they actually sell a package deal where you can get all that stuff in one discounted purchase. And like I said, you can use that promo code TO101. Um, next thing, you know, obviously these uh, tailgate decals are very popular. There's a lot of different brands out there. Now uh, these are by BD Trims. Um, like I said, I think they're kind of in that $50, $60 price range. So they're definitely not the cheapest, but um, they're the raised uh, dome style and that gloss, how that like, 
carries that reflection and stuff off is just awesome. They have some great colors. I've done a few different colors. They sent me some once. Uh, like the American flag one looks really great and it's reflective. So you actually see some kind of like this, see like some striping at night, which is really cool. Um, like those as well. Uh, this has been on there for a couple years and I've had zero issues. Many car washes, summers and winters up here in Minnesota. No, no complaints. Highly recommend them. Uh, this B&W Stow and Go Hitch is great for somebody that has multiple trailers, uh, maybe at multiple height points. Uh, it can stow around and flip so you don't have, you know, a shin <laughs> crusher if you walk around your truck. Um, pros and cons, uh, this does create a pretty decent low point at the two inch setting, which is my most common one. If I was doing one and seven eighths, that would be a lot better, but, um, you know, I do have a trailer that does have that. Uh, I borrow from my dad from time to time, so it's nice to have the option, but, um, I guess if you just do a two ball variant, it's straight up and down anyway. So you kind of always have that low point. So, um, again, if, if you are jumping between trailers of different ball sizes, different heights, this is a phenomenal item, would recommend it. Super well built. Um, the shaft that goes into my receiver here did, it did feel a little bit loose. And if you have a heavy trailer, it's just fine. But if you have an empty trailer or a really light trailer, I was getting a lot of like bouncing. Like I do have a, another trailer I borrow from my dad that has leaf springs that are really heavy duty, uh, but it's just a flat utility trailer. And when that sucker is empty and there's that wiggle, uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, so I just gotta make sure to get some decent tongue weight on it. And then I actually did buy these from Amazon after the fact kind of shaved it a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see. I did shave a little bit for that weld to make that a really snug fit. Um, but that actually helped a lot. So I've been really happy with this. I would recommend it, but like I said, there are a couple little cons and it's expensive. So if all you're doing is just, there's one trailer that you like, um, probably not gonna need to use this one too much. But um, last thing on lighting. Um, I do have a few things from Boost Auto Parts. Uh, and some more stuff coming, which is going to be really awesome. But uh, my fog lights, I like them when they come on at night. I just, I like the look. I've got them there, right? So with the headlights on those, it's just, it's a nice aggressive look. I really like it. But I didn't like pressing the fog light button all the time. So uh, they sell, there it is. That little red clip there is part of it. Um, that blue part, here it is. So yeah, it's just a little jumper. It's actually a diode to keep it one direction. Um, so the, it's just hijacking your parking lights, uh, circuit and sending current down your fog lights. Um, it was really easy to install, works perfect as advertised. And then you never have to press your fog light button. If you want your fog lights on, uh, they just come on automatically at, at night. So, um, yeah, I've had that for a couple of years, zero issues, been really happy with it. So, uh, let's move on to a couple more parts. All right, a few more cosmetic things and even a performance thing, finally. Okay, uh, let's get into it. Um, first one is this stubby antenna. This was just off Amazon, uh, Antenna Mass R Us. Uh, I just love the clean look, matches everything. Installs just twist on, twist off. My reception really was unchanged. I mean, obviously it's shorter, so but it had some like better antenna technology on the inside of it, they said. I tested it, and where my other radio signals cut out, this would cut out roughly at the same point, so... Zero regrets on that. I would never go back to the stock one. And I, I, I like the look. It looks really clean. Wasn't too expensive. Again, that was just on Amazon. I was really happy with it. Uh, it's flexible. So again, if it ever got caught on something in a car wash, or, you know, nothing to worry about. Um, now, so far to this point, uh, everything has been DIY. I guess the wheels, I had to get them installed or mounted and balanced and stuff. But uh, so far, everything has been uh, DIY, you know, and for the most part, everything has, will be, uh, but there are a couple that, uh, I did not do, was not able to do. Like I said, the tires were one. Uh, the next one coming up here is a paint protection film. And I had that added on at the dealership. Um, again, I did, if you follow my channel, uh, you can kind of see the, the lines where things start and stop here. But, um, if you follow the channel, I had a 2019 RSD that had the white front bumper and within just, you know, under 10,000 miles, the front end was getting all chipped up to heck. And so now with this trail boss, I have learned, and I did check that box. Um, I believe it was like an $800 um, add-on, which is certainly nothing to <laughs> sneeze at, but we got not a single rock chip. You know, I just got a little bit of bug guts here for my drive this morning. But um, yeah, really great, happy with it. Um, 
you know, why would I do anything different? I'll, as we'll get on, you'll see I'll have that kind of bug deflector uh, from AVS coming up. Uh, that with paint protection film is overkill and unnecessary, so I probably would have just limited it. I think the most important spot to have it is on that front bumper, that metal, that's just going to get chipped up. You know, if it's not a chrome bumper, you're going to have problems. So um, that's definitely, I would never have a front painted bumper without paint protection, uh, period. Uh, actually, surprisingly, part of their accessory package was having a strip right here inside the door. And I have loved that, like swinging your door open in the garage or at a uh, parking lot or something like that. That really helps prevent uh, chipping and stuff. So really happy with that too. Let's do another little cosmetic look. Uh, I do have a Putco light bar installed under here. I believe it's the 60 inch. It's like the largest blade that they had. Um, it's turn signals reverse. It does a very bright white light. Uh, that helps with backup, especially with the LEDs that I've upgraded. With that, um, you can see great uh, backing up through that backup camera with this. So i um, been really happy with that premium one. There was like a wiring harness that made that install a breeze. There's no splicing, tapping into wires or anything. And it just works. You know, it's a solid uh, bar. It's not like a rolled up one. So it's, it's just seems very durable, uh, premium. It's been really happy with it. Okay, performance part. Uh, is a K&N uh, cold air intake, just all one unit. Uh, the idea is that you have just the extra performance, uh, the maintenance, you don't have to replace them. I just gotta clean that out. Looks like it's actually might be due for a good cleaning. But, um, you know, uh, the GM ones, you know, part of their concern is noise and stuff. They'll, they'll sacrifice, you know, noise dampening, or they'll sacrifice airflow for the sake of dampening noise. This one has a, I actually had this installed before my exhaust, and it did give it a nice little growl when you were accelerating. So if you're just looking for just a touch more sound, especially like when you're getting on the gas, um, just going with a cold air intake system, uh, you get more power, which you see that big camper that I'm pulling. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to get every little bit of power I could out of this truck with that and the exhaust that's coming up. And like I said, it does sound very cool as well. But obviously, if you really want to step up your sound, you got to go to an exhaust. So let's keep moving on. All right. Well, the last part that you're going to, if you've got the send it mentality, you're definitely not going to want to be without. It's an aftermarket exhaust. <laughs> let's take a look at this bad boy. Uh, this is the Borla. Uh, S type as far as the noise and tone level. It's a true dual exhaust for the 6.2 with the quad carbon fiber tips, which look fantastic. And they are not fake. That's real carbon fiber to where they actually had to like screw them onto the metal to as far as a means of attaching carbon fiber to an exhaust tip. Uh, as they said, they look amazing on this truck. That little bit of poke with the red and everything. Um, that's just awesome. Um, like I said, it was uh, not not the most affordable option for sure, uh, but if you're gonna have your truck for a while, uh, enjoy these trucks while they can make a lot of loud noise while they can. Like I said, we kind of all see the writing on the wall with electric vehicles coming. I mean, I'm excited about that too, but uh, this is actually my first aftermarket exhaust system I've put on a truck and I absolutely love it. I'm sure my neighbors aren't super fans at 7.15 in the morning. Even the S-Type, the cold start, is loud, a little too loud for me. Like some, like some nice neighborhood and kids and stuff. It's a little loud, but within seconds it calms right down. Uh, the on the road it is exactly what I want. I love the tone. Um, you know, I think you know the. I would like to see what the uh, touring would be, but like you know, I want to enjoy it while I still can. So the S type is great. I do my video. I review the attack as well. And the decibel level isn't a whole lot different. It's really the tone. If you want a, a louder, raspier like attack versus a lower, growlier kind of, but like I said, a similar noise level is really what the difference is. Just one seems more subtle and one seems more aggressive, like the name kind of suggests, right? Um, so you can't really go wrong with either option. It's just kind of your personal preference. So, all right, let's go inside the vehicle, check a couple more things out. All right, entering the truck, the first thing uh, is that I made a video. I actually didn't get a ton of views, but I was super impressed with it as far as how the end result came, is that I did my own front driver and passenger side window tint uh, on Amazon. Like, the hardest part about doing window tint, honestly, is cutting the film. Uh, and on Amazon, you can buy pre-cut film exactly for our truck. So 
Um, you know, I'll just, it took some prepping, cleaning the surface, you know, getting the right tools and stuff. I made a whole video all about it. Um, and then the pre-cut piece just lay here, squeegeeing it on. Uh, it's not absolutely perfect. Um, I think I did have like a crease. I'm not even sure if the camera can pick it up. Uh, but yeah, there is a, there is a little bit of a crease. Oh, there it is. You know, and I, like I said, I got to look for it really hard <laughs> to even notice it, but you know, I guess I'm not sure how much, if you're just going to spend a couple hundred bucks doing a tint, uh, but this was 40 and I was really happy with it. It came out great. I've had it on for almost a couple years now and zero complaints. So, um, I would definitely do that one again. All right. In the truck, we got a few more things to go over. Uh, the first thing I should suppose, the things you can't really see is, uh, I do have the auto stop eliminator. Uh, what that does is it actually changes the auto stop to be on or off based on the previous setting. So it's not when it eliminates it, it actually, what it means is, uh, it just remembers, you know, obviously a, a kind of a frustrating part of that. If you're not a fan of auto stop is that you have to press the auto stop off button every single time you turn on your truck. Um, and then what you have to do is you have to take off some of this paneling and stuff, and then you remove a wire harness and then plug in the auto stop eliminator in line with it. And then you plug in that uh, into the socket and then it just remembers what your previous setting was. So you can still have your auto stop turn on or off, uh, if you so choose. Uh, but yeah, like I say it's just a one-time setting the way it kind of should be. And you know, so far that's been great. I've had it on for over a year. Uh, zero complaints. Honestly, I leave my auto stop off most of the time. I've played around with it at like uh, drive drive up, you know, fast food where I want the truck to not be so loud. Or if I know I'm going through a lot of stop signs, I've, I've played around with it. But to be honest, it, it stays off most of the time. <laughs> um, next, uh, I do have, I've gone through a couple variations. I went through the Amazon uh, version of this and made a video about it. Uh, but this one is the Boost Auto Parts uh, wireless charging pad. Uh, between the two, I actually made a comparison video and this one, uh, it won out. It was just, it's, it's better design. There's multiple charging coils. So your phone can, doesn't have to be so perfect. Um, they both uh, charge the same way through the same kind of wiring harness solutions. Just this one looks cleaner, more factory. Um, it charges more consistently. Um, you know, I, all wireless chargers, you do get issues where your phone heats up more. And like I said, in the sun, if the spot's hot, it can get your phone hot and how fast your phone charges does slow down dramatically if it's hot. So, you know, I'm not going to say it does say it does support fast wireless charging, but you know, obviously nothing's going to be faster than plugging in. But, um, as you can see, I don't have any cords. I'm completely wireless, um, with the wireless charging pad and, uh, with the next couple things I have, um, that white automotive, uh, and media, I think it's wham, I think is what their, their site is. Um, they sell a couple of things and I have both of them. I made a video on each, uh, and I've been very happy with them. Again, this is a 2020 Silverado LT. So in 2020, they had Apple CarPlay, but it wasn't wireless. I'd have to always plug in. Um, and like I said, I'm not a fan of all the cords and stuff. Um, you know, like I said, I wanted the wireless charging pad. I wanted all wireless system here. So, uh, there is underneath this area. And again, I've got another video. I can maybe splice some footage in, uh, but you go under that, uh, passenger side area and there is a little box that has the computer work and stuff in it for your whole uh, infotainment system. And you contact them, uh, you give them all your information, like VIN number and everything. They got to match this thing to your truck and they will send you that radio upgrade and you'll have wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, navigation and stuff. Um, and so you have factory navigation if you don't like using Apple stuff. Um, and then the second piece, and if you get them both together, it kind of unlocks everything. So this is a high country cluster sold by, by white automotive and media again. And again, I have an LT trail boss. I should not have that nicer, bigger, you know, screen and, um, everything up here is digital. Everything down here is digital. Um, you know, this gauge changes when I'm in tow haul mode to have my transmission temperature. Um, and because I have factory navigation upgraded over here, uh, in this corner, I always have what the posted speed limit is. And it's been pretty accurate. You know, if you do have Apple CarPlay, you'll get that uh, on their maps as well. But it's nice to just, if I'm listening to music, I can see the speed thing. So um, everything has been phenomenal with this. Zero complaints. You know, my satellite radio works great. My wireless Apple CarPlay works great. 
Uh, as far as review stuff, because I've had it for a while, um, you can get Wi-Fi interference with wireless Apple CarPlay. Like so if you have it, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you drive through an area that must have some powerful Wi-Fi beaming or something, um, you know, like I said, I usually leave my phone right here and there'll be times where that wireless connection does cut out and it says wireless, you know, interference or something detected. So, um, you know, that might be an antenna issue uh, as well, but it does seem pretty consistent. There's certain like kind of almost construction places that I drive past and um, they seem to always knock it out just for a little bit and then it bounces right back. So, you know, if you are thinking of investing, I know that's there's a lot of cheaper dongles and stuff to get you wireless CarPlay, but if you want it seamless, integrated, this clean, that's really the only way to do it is to, to go through them. So again, I've got videos on how to install both of these. And again, my kind of gear-ish review on them. I've, I've loved it. This truck is, the technology inside the truck is really kind of shaped up to exactly what I wanted when I wanted to purchase it. If I could have built it my own way, it would have been with this cluster, it would have been with the wireless CarPlay, and now I've got it. So I'm, I'm really happy with those. Okay, this next one, you're probably just gonna uh, reserve one of these and just enjoy the wait. Uh, because they are a hot commodity. Uh, I had to wait a couple months to get mine from kind of their first run. Uh, I've got another YouTuber I'll give a shout out. Uh, he goes by Carlisle Projects. Uh, he's been waiting a couple months to get his as well. And it's this under seat storage solution from DZ. Uh, it's all metal uh, made in Iowa uh, under seat storage that is a drawer slide that you unlock and now, if you're like me and you've got car seats and you can't flip your seats up and down anymore, getting able to gain access to that storage is impossible. So uh, this new product was just the thing for me. Um, <clears throat> it opens, it's one single drawer that you can slide out from either direction and see if I can get back there. Uh, come on, phone. All right, yeah, you see those blue jumper cables. That is the end of the drawer. So we're darn near uh, full reach, but yeah, there's a, there's a handle on both sides uh, that you can extend out to gain access to this stuff. Um, I absolutely love it. Like I said, I know they're having trouble keeping, keeping these things in stock. They've, it, it's been really nice. So, but I know real truck, you can order it. You'll kind of keep your ticket, wait in line. Um, uh, like, so hopefully after filming, uh, their supply chain issues get resolved, but, um, like I, said, I have been super happy with it. Like I said, it really maximizes that space really, really well. It's probably the most expensive item on my truck or combination of items. It is my um, tonneau cover and you know bike rack storage solution. Uh, it's a Roll and Lock XT, the A variant, so it's all aluminum slats. Um, and then it's got uh, Rhino rack uh, bars. A bike rack mount and then this basket which uh, I mean you can put coolers and stuff on this uh, I actually use it for my kids uh, you know kind of toddler smaller 16 inch bikes uh, just strap them onto the front of that uh, what makes this incredible is that when we go camping I still have all of this area as dry storage um, normally if you had bikes and you didn't have a system like on your camper trailer uh, you would have to do one of those like blankets here and have the bikes hanging off the back and that's great and all but now you have to keep your bed cover open and you've just lost all that dry storage potential being able to store everything up here has been a game changer this is like i said the most combination expensive thing on my truck right now this is probably three grand or more uh, for this setup and I know that's insane, crazy a lot of money, not something I would have pulled the trigger on unknowing, but uh, knowing what I know now, um, if, again, if I sold this truck today and had to buy a new truck, uh, the way that has helped our camping scenario, I absolutely would purchase it again. Uh, now, if you don't need all this stuff, like if you don't need this rail system so you can mount this these rack storage stuff, obviously uh, this is way way too much stuff for you um for for a couple or i guess a year and a half or so um, i had the bach revolver uh, the x4s right as that came out i had a video on that uh, i loved that cover um i was kind of sad to take it off to put this one on but i saw the potential it was a new product that real truck wanted me to feature and i've as you can see i have been completely sold by it um Pros and cons, uh, obviously the cost and stuff. This roll-up style canister going into here does take a little bit of storage space away. 
uh, but since it does stay low, it enables this. So like, with a revolver rolling up, you would never be able to have a system like this. So, you know, the last thing is that it does have to release it. There's just a little latch here that that can be locked. If you want to close this, you got to pull this cord. There you go. But um, yeah, that cord tends to get caught on a lot of stuff. And again, if money is no object, they do make an electric version of this. So you just press a key fob button and this would just automatically retract on its own. I would have loved to have seen that one. Uh, but like I said, we're already breaching max price points already. So, um, but yeah, I do love this A style, with the nice flat metal slats. There's no like canvas or anything on this. Um, the track system has worked great. Um, the locking system, everything. And like I said, the storage rack, you can customize whatever you want. Um, I do have a second one of these I plan on installing later. Uh, like, so we've got a, a newborn and stuff. Once our kids get a little older, we'll put three bikes here. We'll slide this over. We'll put a second one there. My wife will get a bike. So that's kind of how we plan on fully maximizing it. So, um, yeah, it's an expensive thing, but again, if you're camping, you know how, how hard it is to get everything you need brought with you for long trips. Uh, that was a game changer for us. All right, the last thing that I've got to show you was the last video I made, and it featured the AVS Light Shield Pro. And it's like sort of bug deflector, chip guard, whatever you want to call it. Um, made by AVS. It's their Pro version, which was a new one that just recently came out. And uh, what it is, is there's a light bar that gets tucked inside here, and it gives you not only uh, the non Pro version is instead of this like solid bar it's like a rolled up strip one and this one came solid from the factory so um what this one actually did was tap into my turn signals and stuff uh, the non-pro version gives you you know your marker lights so you have like a couple lights here lights here at the end this one does that too so as your parking lights come on your headlights come on you'll get those but then also when you uh, make a left turn or a right turn or hazards you'll get some animations here as well so uh, it is high noon right now. The sun is right on these. I don't think my camera is going to pick it up, so I'll show you a little bit of B-roll footage of those running with some a little bit better lighting situation. But um, install was good. Wiring, you know, at the time of me receiving this product, uh, there wasn't a single video on YouTube about how to wire this thing. So uh, now that's out there. It's on my channel. Go check it out. Overall, really happy with it. I did in the video, you'll find out, I tried to find workarounds as far as tapping into wires. I didn't want to do that. You know, I didn't have to do that with like my Putco light bar and stuff. So I was trying to avoid it. Ended up not working out. Uh, just follow the directions, follow my video, just tap into the wires. That's what I'd recommend doing. So, uh, but yeah, that was my last one. And again, I'm really excited. I want to kind of sneak peek preview my next video. Hopefully it might be my next one. Uh, it's, it's coming soon is uh, I'm going to be getting some tow mirrors and not just any tow mirrors. I'm going to be getting boost auto parts aftermarket tow mirrors that have been in the works <laughs> since it seems like 2019. I felt like I kind of saw the coming soon on their website, but um, they're going to be awesome. Uh, from what I hear, they're going to look and act a lot like the uh, factory ones. Uh, but if you don't have like auto folding capabilities, you don't have like, you know, markers and park like lights and stuff inside them. Like mine, as you can see, are pretty basic. You know, I've got, I can heat my mirrors. I can rotate them a bit, but I can't collapse them. I can't do all that cool stuff. They're going to try to like retro give you those. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't show anything. I can't give you any detail about how that works, but as soon as I can, you bet I will. So uh, if that is anything you're interested in, please like, subscribe, follow the channel. Again, uh, if you love your truck like I do, please look at uh, buying one of these shirts. Uh, like I said, some of them are kind of like a jersey, some are kind of like a soft fabric material, but um, you know, I, I love them. I'm really happy with them. It's kind of a cool thing to do a couple years into this uh, uh, 10,000 subscriber special kind of thing to try to bring that in. So um, hopefully this information was valuable to you. If it was, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, but yeah, thanks a ton for watching and for uh, joining me on all this. It's been really fun. So until next time, class dismissed. <laughs>